Welcome back, folks. Today's topic is common drain JFET amplifiers. Now, common drain amplifiers fall into that class of circuits that we call followers. Right? So a common drain amplifier uh, would also be known as a source follower. You might remember that followers in general have a common set of characteristics. They have um, a gain of ideally one, it's usually a little bit less, but ideally one very high input impedance, very low output impedance, low distortion, non-inverting. Right? We can make a nice uh, comparison to a common collector bipolar amplifier, in other words, uh, an emitter follower. All right. Um, some of the calculations that we're going to see here are very similar to what we did for the common source amplifiers, the normal voltage amplifier. Some of these uh, uh, calculations, if you will, are, are identical. However, the gain we'll see is a little bit different. So let's start with um, you know, a typical little circuit that we might use, something like this. I'm just pulling a... a Nice little self bias out of here, but here's the deal. Here's my here's my VN. Going into the gate, all right. So we've got some gate resistance out here. Source resistor for biasing. We're not going to need a uh, a drain resistor. So we're not going to develop a voltage out here at the drain, an AC voltage, just coming right off the source. So the load sits out here like this. All right, so this topology is very similar to what we saw with the bipolar transistor. All right, we want to figure out, again, the big three, I want to figure out uh, what are we looking at for input impedance, what are we looking at for output impedance, what do we uh, see for a voltage gain, All right? Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, replace the transistor with its model. So you might remember um, the model consists of a current source, a controlled current source, which is equal to GMVGS, all right, that's ID. Here's the source of the FET. There is a resistance value over here, RGS, which we can approximate as being infinity, at least at low frequencies. All right, as we go higher in frequency, the capacitance of the gate source will start to come into play and the Z and will start to drop. But, continuing, that's my transistor. Power supply turns into an AC ground. Coming back off the gate, we have our G, the biasing resistor. And that, of course, capacitor is uh, shorted, and we have our source. All right. Then out here, we have these two resistors. We have the RS value. I'm going to leave these separate for just a moment. The cap is going to short. Here's the RL value. And we can take this combo, of course, and put them in parallel. We'll call that little... Uh, we can either call it little RS or little RL, whatever floats your boat. All right, so from here, what I want to do is uh, I want to figure out uh, some expressions for things like voltage gain and so forth. Well, the first thing I'm, gonna, I'm just going to kind of throw it out real easy. It should be obvious because it's identical to what we saw uh, for the common source amplifier, and that's the input impedance. You know, if you're sitting back here looking in, you know, what do you see for a Z in? Well, you see RG, and that's in parallel with Z in to the gate, which is your RGS, simple enough. I mean, there's actually other things here, but it doesn't even matter because RGS is virtually infinity. So you have this huge value in parallel with RG, so Z in can just be approximated as whatever RG is. And we're good with that. Okay? All right, now the Z out, you would be sitting back here looking into the source of the FET. What do we see in that case? Well, we're going to see that biasing resistor in parallel with the impedance looking into the source. Well, what is that piece? 
Okay, well, z into the source, you can sort of define this through an Ohm's law relationship, right? That's basically just Vs over Is. Well, what's your Vs? Well, you know, for, for your ace, for your um, uh, analysis here, your, your gate is virtually ground. So your source voltage is your gate source voltage. All right, that's essentially what you're seeing for that. Um, and then IS, of course, is the source current. And that is the drain current, right? Source current and drain current are the same current. So um, you basically have the ratio of VGS over GMVGS, which is, of course, 1 over GM. So your Z out is just RS in parallel with 1 over GM. Okay? All right. Last thing. Let's find out what the voltage gain expression is. So voltage gain, as always, is your output voltage over your input voltage. So let's describe the output voltage. Well, this current's coming down through here, right? Like yay, that's going to produce a drop polarity plus to minus top to ground, right? So right off the bat, we can say, hey, this does not invert, right? No inversion. In other words, with this polarity of input signal, the polarity of the output signal should be identical. Okay? Beauty. Now, the output voltage is just this, right? It's the drop across little rs or little rl, whatever you want to call it. So that's RL times the current through it, which is GMVGS. What is the input voltage? Well, here's the input voltage back here. It's VGS plus, quite literally, that same drop, RL times GMVGS. Well, you factor out the VGS, okay? You can kill that. Right, you can get rid of that. And what we wind up with is GMRL or RS divided by 1 plus GMRS or RL. Right? Whichever way you want to look at it. Um, sometimes I like to I like to call it G GMRS simply because it's a nice reminder that you're taking the signal off of the source. Remember the non-swamped amplifier that we had for um, common source. All right, for the common source, the gain was, uh, we could call it GMRL or GMRD uh, over 1 plus GMRS. So what you see here is that the denominator is always 1 plus GMRS. And then if you're taking the output off the drain, you use RD. If you're taking the output off the source, you use RS. All right, that's a little mnemonic aid kind of thing that you can use. Um, so the, the formulation on this is, is uh, sort of consistent, right? Okay, so that's our, that's our gain. Now the trick here is you would like it to be the case that GMRL, or RS, is much bigger than 1, right? If that's true, if GMRS is much, much bigger than 1, then AV is approximately 1, right? So ideally, you would like a really big value of GM. That's really what you're focusing on. Um, the AC value of RS is really dictated, for the most part, by IRL. Um, and the thing that you're trying to drive, so you really want to focus on getting a high GM there so that you can get this gain that's close to 1. Okay? All right. So um, at this point, it's probably a good idea if we just put some numbers into a circuit like this, see what we come up with. All right? So let's say we have... I'll just redraw this. I'm going to use the, um, the transistor that we used in the preceding example so that we don't have to sort of redo the bias all over again. Save ourselves a little bit of hassle. 
So um, we'll put in a 200 ohm, for, let's see, put 200 ohm for that, and across it we'll put in, let's say, a 2K. Okay, power supply, eh, it's not really critical. Let's just put in 20 volts over there. And we can put in, oh, I don't know, let's see, a volt for the source. Transistor itself, like I said, we'll reuse the one from last time. 10 milliamps for IDSS, VGS off was minus 2. And we can figure out the GM0 value. I'll sneak that over here. I remember GM0. This is, again, a device equation, right? It's not a bias equation. Um, negative 2 IDSS over, oops, VGS off. All right, so we've got a negative 2 times 10 milliamps over a negative 2 volts, so that's going to be 10 millisiemens. Good eight. All right. What kind of bias is this? Well, this is uh, self-bias, like I said. So just a quick reminder of what we did last time for the self-bias graph. All right, we know it's self-bias because the voltage drop across this resistor has to equal VGS. Right? There's no external gate voltage. There's no uh, extra source voltage down here. There's no bipolar transistor to make a current source. So the current that flows down through here, the ID, produces a drop across this resistor, and that voltage is what sets up the VGS, in other words, which is what sets up the original current, hence the term self-biased. That's why we know it's self-biased. So the self-biased curve looks something like this. We've got GM0 RS on this axis, and then the ratio of ID to IDSS over here. All right, so the GM0 we just found to be 10 millisiemens. RS, again, this is a bias value. Notice the uppercase. So that's the 200 ohm. All right, that's going to be uh, 10 millisiemens times 200 ohms, 0.2K ohms. So that's going to get us 2. Bring that up, bring it across, and the value of um, ID over IDSS is 0 0.38, 38%. So ID would have to um, equal 0.38, 38% of IDSS. Okay, so IDSS is 10 milliamps, so that's going to equal 3.8 mils. Right. Well, we don't need to here, but if we wanted to, we could very quickly just do an Ohm's Law calculation and get the drop across there. Um, I do, however, need to find the, the uh, GM value, the, the transconductance value. So GM is equal to GM0 times the square root of ID over IDSS. So for us, that's going to be uh, GM0 10 millisiemens times the square root of 0.38. And that works out to 6.16 millisiemens. Okay. So we can now figure out uh, the values of interest. Right? So our, our Zn, like I said, by um, observation, really, is just one meg. Right? We just say, ah, it's about a meg. We're good. At low frequencies, right? High frequencies. Capacitance is going to start shunting and it's going to drop off. The Z out is the 200 ohm, right? We're looking at RS um, in parallel with 1 over GM. So that's 200 ohms in parallel with 1 over 6.16 millisiemens. All right, so um, that's like 160 some odd, 162 ohms for this piece of it. You put that in parallel with the um, the 200, and you're looking at a Z out of 89.7 ohms. All right. Now, lastly, we figure out what the gain is. So um, we are looking at this form right here, the GM. 
times RS over 1 plus G MRS. So 6.16 millisiemens times RS. Now the RS value is, again, this is the AC value. So that's 200 in parallel with 2K. All right, that's a 10 to 1 ratio. So you're going to get up, you're going to lose about 10% of the small one. This is 181 ohms. So we'll take 181 ohms there, divide by 1 plus that same quantity. Now, 6.16 millisiemens times 181 ohms is not a very big number. So, you know, unfortunately, we don't have this with this particular circuit, but, you know, that's what you get. Just trying to reuse the old circuit. Um, anyway, that works out to uh, 0.527. So we get 52.7% um, of the signal, right? If I had one volt coming in out here, we're going to get 52.7 times that, or 0.527 volts. Okay. Now, um, suppose we had a fairly high source impedance associated with this. In other words, back here, right? Maybe it's easier to see over here. I have a source impedance that's fairly large. This is what followers are all about. They're all about trying to match a, um, a signal source that has a high internal impedance to a load that's fairly small. Now, what if you had, um, let's say, like a guitar pickup over here? The internal impedance on a guitar pickup can be pretty high. I mean, it's basically a coil of wire that has you know, very, very fine wire, uh, like maybe, a, I don't know, like a number 60 wire or something like that, and you might have 5,000 turns on a, on a magnet structure like that big. The end result is um, the resistive part of that could be several k-ohms, and the inductive part could be a couple of henrys, right? Not millihenrys, but henrys. So you figure this out at audio frequencies, you know, one kilohertz, five kilohertz, something like that. That impedance could be, you know, 20 K ohms. Well, what if you tried to connect this directly to your load? In other words, you said, well, geez, this thing only gets me 52%. I don't like that. That's not good enough. Let's just get rid of it. You know, accent optional. Um, this is what you'd wind up with. You'd have a 20K over here, and you're going to try to feed into um, a 2K. All right, there's your 2K load over there. Well, you know, right off the bat, without even getting out your calculator, you can see what's happening here. You know, the voltage divider is going to be 2K divided by 20 plus 2K, 22K, right? You're going to get 1/11th. In other words, you're going to get um, oh, about 90. 91 millivolts out of here. Well, that's not great. <laughs> you know, you might complain about this, but I'd rather get half a volt over half a volt than, you know, less than 100 millivolts, right? So this is um, this is going to work much, much better because the, the uh, voltage divider effect that we would have on the front end, you know, between the 20K and the ZN, which is roughly one meg, and, you know, that's that's a fraction of a percent, right? I mean, that's, that's um, well, a couple of percent. It's not much at all. So really, even though this is not a gain of one, you know, it's only 0.527, you're actually going to get a much better result than if you tried to just sort of dispense with this and connect it directly like this, right? Like I said over here, you're only getting like, you know, 91 millivolts from that one, one volt source. Most of your signal is going to get lost internally, right? You never get it to the output. And of course, this just gets worse and worse and worse and worse as we go to lower and lower load impedances. You know, if we said, oh, I want to put in um, a couple hundred ohms here, right? Let's say it's just 200 ohms rather than 2K. Why, that deserves another color. Right? I'm going to say that's, uh, here's a picture over here, right? I'm going to say that's only 200 ohms. Well, now look at the divider you have. 200 versus 20K? Wow, you're getting, you're getting destroyed on this thing. Right? You're just going to get a handful of millivolts out of this from this one-volt source. Yet, how much change do we get back here? You know, if that's a 200 ohm, 
all right, this is going to drop. You know, it's not going to be 181. It's going to be 200 in parallel with 200, which is 100. Okay. Um, that is going to lower this a little bit further, right, because this is only going to be 100 now. So you're not even going to get 0.5. I don't know exactly what you're going to get, but I'll guarantee you this much. It's going to be a heck of a lot more than 1% of the signal, which is what you're going to pull over here. Okay, so this is going to match that um, low impedance load much, much better to this higher impedance uh, generator uh, value that we have. All right, and it's largely made possible because we can create these huge Z in values due to the uh, uh, reverse bias PN junction on the FET. Okay, all right, that pretty much wraps up our JFET discovery. But this is not completely done because our next big topic, we're going to talk about MOSFETs, right? Metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistors. How's that for a mouthful? Much of the performance on those devices is similar to JFETs. Um, turns out there's two kinds of MOSFETs that uh, we'll look at. They operate in a slightly different way. But um, like JFETs, they do have a square law characteristic. They have very similar overall performance characteristics. In other words, we can get crazy high input impedances. Um, they're low distortion. They're fast devices, low noise. They don't have very high gain compared to bipolars, but again, it's not a matter of trying to replace the bipolar. It's trying to make something that complements it, if you will. So you know, a circuit like this would be a nice front end, very first stage to minimize any kind of, of uh, loading effect that you'd have. You know, think about it go back in time here a little bit and think about input impedance to a bipolar amplifier. You know, a couple of K ohms is not a crazy number for a little BJT amplifier. But like I said, yeah, you could have 20K for that, uh, you know, guitar pickup. Man, you're getting slaughtered over here on this signal. So, yeah, maybe having a, a little FET front end on this would be a pretty good idea. All right. All right, we'll pick it up next time. There you go.